Hi folks, the Filipina Bee here, telling it like it is. Well, there are going to be some truth bombs dropped today, and I expect to make some enemies here in my home country. But if you know anything about me from my previous videos, you'll know I don't shy away from topics I feel strongly about, and this is one of them. Since I've been doing interviews with locals and asking questions about whether they felt a duty to support their parents and families, a lot of you folks have been surprised and sometimes shocked at the way Filipinos seem determined to take whatever resources they can gather and turn them over to their parents, even when it's your resources we're talking about. You've heard the old saying that when you marry a Filipina, you marry her whole family too. Well, that's not just some cute or quaint notion that refers to close bonds within the family. It also means that once you marry a Filipina, you become a legitimate source of income in their eyes. After all, you're part of the family now too. And if your wife is responsible for the family, then by extension, you are as well. To you, that seems shady, greedy, unfair, and makes you feel as though you're just an ATM for her family with a price tag attached to the relationship. But what you may not realize is that there's a cultural tradition here that's at the root of this behavior, and it's going to be really difficult to put an end to it. I'm talking about the Filipino tradition of utang na loob, which means indebtedness, and means that Filipinos owe their parents everything, and it has the effect of turning children into employees, on a never-ending quest to provide more and more resources for the family. It can create so much pressure on a child to produce that it ultimately leads to deceptions, conflicts with their spouse, immoral behavior, and worse. In some cases, it becomes a form of brainwashing from which there is no escape. But where did this tradition come from? Why does it still exist? And how does it affect your relationship with your Filipina? Well, hang on tight as we dive right in. This is stuff you need to know. Can you imagine telling your kids every day as they leave for school, have a good day, honey, and remember, you owe me everything. Or when they grow up and get a promotion at work and you say to them, great, more money for me. Now in your world, any parent that would do this would seem like a greedy monster. But this is exactly the scenario that millions of Filipino children face every day. Not every Filipino family practices the tradition of utang na loob, but most of the economically disadvantaged ones sure do. Basically, it's the idea that from the moment a child is born, he owes his parents for his very life and every single thing they've done for him, including the clothes on his back and the food he's eaten since he entered this world. The child is expected to not only respect and obey his parents, but his mission in life is to fulfill their dreams and support them financially as well. Now, turning your kids into income producers isn't a new concept, and it's been employed by different societies across the globe for millennia. In places with no social safety net, children become your retirement plan. So in order to secure yourself financially, you just have as many kids as possible and send them out in the world to gather resources for you. They're expected to do the same thing with their kids, and the cycle goes on forever. While it's true in a technical sense that a child owes its existence to its parents, does that mean that a child should automatically be burdened by the need to acquire financial resources for its parents and siblings? To me, that sounds an awful lot like indentured servitude, or worse, familial slavery. What this means is that in his youth, a child isn't able to save for himself or put aside money for his future family or his kids, which almost guarantees that he's going to end up using his own children as little employees as he ages. This system creates a vicious cycle of generational poverty and overpopulation because parents are encouraged to have even more children that they can't afford to go to work for him. Many of you have dated a Filipina with a poverty-level job at a grocery store or at the mall, and you've seen how little money she brings home, and you wonder how she can possibly make ends meet. And then, you see her sending money to her folks or buying school supplies for her little brother, and it just seems insane to you that she feels responsible for all this, 
when she's barely surviving herself. He tried to explain to her that she never asked to be born and that it's her parents' responsibility to provide for the children they chose to create. She hears your words and might even nod in agreement, but you know that her programming runs too deep and you're not getting through to her. This conversation has been repeated countless times between Filipinas and their Western partners, with no resolution except conflict and a bunch of hurt feelings. Utang na loob has to be one of the most contentious issues facing mixed couples, but there are much worse, much more sinister effects of this tradition. The constant pressure put on children to procure money for the family sometimes results in Filipinas becoming scammers in order to extract resources from the men who show interest in them. It's easy to scam someone online that you don't know and they're never going to see. When you got your mom constantly on your back about having bills she can't pay. And even when they know where the money's coming from, some parents just look the other way as long as the pipeline stays open. What a wonderful lesson to teach your kids. And speaking of exchanging morality for money, here's a nasty truth bomb that may be hard to wrap your head around, but I assure you, it's true. Every year, an untold number of young Filipinas, usually from the provinces, are encouraged by their parents to go find employment in the big city as street walkers in places like Manila and Angeles City. I can't even begin to imagine sending my daughter out like that to make money for me. But it does happen, folks, more often than you think. How could a parent lay their head down at night, knowing that their daughter was out working the bars and sleeping with strangers in order to pay for their next case of beer? It almost leaves me speechless. Now, the obligation of utang na loob is supposed to fall most heavily on the eldest child, but in reality, it somehow only falls on the eldest female child. Lucky us, right? We're supposed to not only provide for our parents, but also to help our siblings by putting them through school, getting them clothes, whatever financial burden arises. We're only free of our obligations once we marry and start popping out little employees of our own so the cycle can start all over again. What a wonderful system. And here's where East meets West where we find so much conflict and resentment between foreigners and Filipinas, all because of the tradition of utang na loob. Now for my Filipino audience who might not be aware, let me give you a brief description of the typical Western system, which is almost the exact opposite of ours. In the West, a smart couple waits until they're financially stable before having children. The children aren't seen as assets. They're regarded as expenditures. It's the parents' duty, since they were the ones who decided to have the child, to protect and nurture their offspring until at least the age of 18, when the child goes off to school or work. Nothing is expected of the child in return, except to stay out of trouble and become as happy, stable, and productive as possible. The parents will usually continue to support their children as long as they're able, even well into adulthood. The idea that children are responsible for their parents' expenses is unheard of. But utang na loob causes even more trouble between our two cultures, beyond just the issue of money. Because a Filipina's had it drilled into her head since the day she was born that her first duty, her primary loyalty, is to her family, not her husband. In the West, the opposite is true. Once you're married, your primary obligation is to your own wife and family, not your parents. This is hard enough to accept for a Western man that's always going to be less important than his wife's family. But it's the ugly truth. As I said, once a woman is married and starts her own family, the financial obligation to her parents is supposed to be removed. But as most foreigners can tell you, that's a bunch of BS and the requests for money never end. There's always an emergency situation, someone's birthday, or a bill to be paid. Now, I've noticed four different reactions to this situation from you foreigners. First, they're the ones that either have plenty of money or just enjoy giving it to other people. You don't seem to mind at all the fact that you're asked to support your wife's family and you guys are the least affected by this tradition. Then we have the guys who don't really like it, but they look at it as a cost of doing business, 
just another expense associated with marrying a Filipina, the price of admission to the ride. They grudgingly send money every month, but it still doesn't cause that much friction in their relationship. Third are the men that really resent this practice. It rubs them the wrong way. And every time they're asked for money, they get angry. And it often ends in an argument between foreigner and Filipina. And fourth, we have the men that have decided, no way, no how. They make it quite clear from the beginning that it's not the responsibility to hand over their hard-earned money to support extended family. And they have no intention of being used as a milking cow for a bunch of other people. People that often include lazy, good-for-nothing relatives. They might be very generous with their wives, but any attempt to extract money from them to pay for a second cousin's electric bill is gonna be met with a glare of indignation, or worse. Now, I fully understand and sympathize with all four different reactions. I really do. If you're the generous type who's not bothered by providing for the whole family, then great. If you feel that the money you made from years of slaving away at your job is yours and your descendants, I don't blame you. If you believe you're actually helping her family by insisting they make their own money with or without your assistance, then I don't disagree with you either. It's not your responsibility to support her folks. But your level of support, if any, is something you and your Filipina need to discuss early in your relationship to avoid countless arguments. Trust me. For those of you who are wondering what kind of support is expected, it's obviously going to depend on our family's individual situation. But the most common amount I hear is about 10,000 pesos per month, about $200. Although that may not be that much money to you, it's the principle of the thing that might bother you the most. Have a talk with your Filipina and show her this video. And explain why the system of utang na loob is not the best way forward. Come to an agreement regarding support for her family, whether it's yes or no, and how much. Then stick to it. But above all, try to make her see why your relationship needs to take precedence if you're gonna make it as a couple and raise your children to be self-sufficient and able to handle what life throws at them. But the problem I have with utang na loob isn't so much the giving of resources, it's the obligation to give. Children are put under tremendous pressure to gather money by whatever means necessary. And that feeling of debt and the need to keep the money machine running can have serious psychological effects on young minds. Now there's a saying that parents tell their children here, Lahat ng meron ka ay galing sa amin, which means everything that you have is from us. I can't tell you how many times I was quoted that myself. What do you think it tells a child when a parent keeps repeating that phrase? It tells us that by ourselves, we're worthless, and our only function is to repay a debt for a loan we never borrowed. Now, respecting your parents is a good idea, most of the time. But constantly reminding your child that they owe you everything they have and that they always need to be giving you more seems very self-serving to me. In my opinion, it should be the parent's obligation since they're the ones that chose to have the child and they should be responsible for their own actions. If they want to be respected and paid for a lifetime, I think it takes more than just having sex to demand all that. And if you can just pop out your own workforce to support yourself, then that's a pretty big incentive to just keep having a bunch of children you can't afford. And before you know it, you've got a nation of unemployed workers fighting over a few low-paying jobs while digging themselves deeper into debt to support the older generation. In other words, you have the Philippines. No, the system needs to change. This wheel needs to be broken. I want my generation to pay it forward and give our kids a fighting chance to escape from crushing debt, obligations, and the pressure to give away all their hard-earned money. They need to become self-sufficient, not born into a life of servitude. In the East, the emphasis is placed on caring for the elders, whereas in the West, resources go to raising the young. Surely we can find a balance between the two cultures, so that people of all ages are given care and respect, while leaving incentives for young people to work hard and save for the future. And I'll promise you this, 
They won't ever see my daughter walking the streets of Angeles City. Even if I'm so poor, I can't afford to feed myself. Because if that's the case, I won't have a child. It's just that simple. And if you're a Filipino watching this video and thinking, but I actually want to help my family, it's a rewarding feeling, then that's great. There's nothing wrong with that. I do it too. But just remember that although it may be your culture to provide for your family, it may not be your partner's. So please be just as sensitive to his feelings as you expect him to be of yours. And with that, it's time to say goodbye for a few days when I'll be back with something else you won't expect. Till then, folks. If you think about it, I'm like Bond, James Bond, delivering classified intelligence for your eyes only. With a license to kill misinformation and bad advice, it's my mission to get you the truth about the Philippines. All I ask for my secret service is that you give a thumbs up on this video, subscribe to my channel, and visit my Patreon page for extra content and exclusive features. And while you're waiting for your next debriefing, Check out some of my other videos too. Well, that left me a little shaken, but not stirred.